Now, with this, we have arrived at a place of great historical interest and some literary value. Uh, the poems that Du Fu have written to Li Bai, the other great Tang poet, are of course of immense historical interest and they prove, taken together, that uh, Li Bai and Du Fu had more than a passing acquaintance. It's quite a remarkable fact actually. These two towering figures of Chinese letters the almost universally acknowledged to be the two greatest Chinese poets. They lived at the same time and they even knew each other. Uh, but it seems that they had they, they crossed uh, roads, you might say, for a few years. Rather briefly, when, when uh, Du Fu was just in the beginning of his career and Li Bai was somewhere halfway through his career, and uh, after that, they really never met again. So the poems that we have by Du Fu to Li Bai, which number about a dozen, they're all from the first part of uh, Du Fu's life, or the, the, the part of his life that uh, we know about from his poems, at least. And uh, actually, it's obvious from all the poems by Dufu to Li Bai that he is he has extraordinary admiration for this man he admires him intensely we can see it here in these uh, how he addresses him Li Ho <laughs> Lord Li yes I don't I, I've never seen this term of address actually to anyone before it's it's something I don't think you I don't think this is a common term of address uh, in the Tang Dynasty and uh, it is clearly meant to signalize his immense respect for for this person and it almost gets it gets a little bit annoying <laughs> i think when you read it and and you realize well, he's this is really his big idol and but and there is also i think there's one or two poems by li bai to du fu and they are not at all they don't they they don't have this tone of adulation or admiration at all. So, Li Bai was, of course, rather older than Du Fu. He was about a decade older. He was born in 701, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Du Fu was born in 712, so there's a, a decade between them. And Li Bai was, of course, he was the rock star. He was uh, so famous, and he had, he, the, he had won the favor of the the great emperor Lord Xuan uh, Zong, and uh, he spent uh, his uh, spent a few years in the capital waiting on on uh, on Xuan Zong, and this is a part of his life that has been he's perhaps most uh, associated with. And he was awarded a kind of uh, a position in the. Uh, you might say the Tang Academy of Letters, the Hanlin Academy, uh, which he left afterwards, and this is after he left it that this poem is written. And he and Du Fu met at Luoyang. So, yes, yeah. Let's let's reread the poem instead of uh, getting bogged down in these historical details. This is a 12-line poem, and uh, it has quite a lot of Taoist vocabulary, which is, I, I suppose, the main difficulty with this one. Um, it is well known that Li Bai was uh, a Taoist, that he aspired to um, the Taoist pursuit of spiritual fulfillment. And we see a lot of traces of this in this poem, because it pleases Du Fu to refer to to these things when he respectfully addresses his great idol. So let's see this. Er nian ke dong du so li yan ji qiao. Yes, so Luoyang is the eastern capital, Dongdu. For two years sojourning in the eastern capital, ke as a verb, then of course. What I went through, so li yan ji qiao. This ji cleverness, 
this mainly means, of course, this, all the scheming and the intrigues for power that goes on in in a great capital. So men of great intellect and shrewdness gather around the centers of power in order to increase their own power power and this is the ji chao that du fu refers to here i think that is how we need to understand it ye ren dui shan xing shu shi chang bu bao a man of the wilds this refers to himself ye ren dui shan xing shan xing is the stench of meat is the stench of meat so the 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 stench of luxurious consumption we might say Du Fu himself is not a city dweller. He frequently speaks of the, of the inconveniences of city life, and here he sort of affects to be just a man from the country. He of course came from a rather good family, and uh, he, in in front, uh, faced with all the the stench of 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 meat, the conspicuous consumption of meat and fish, he is unable even to to keep his vegetables down. This is more or less what he says here. I don't think we ha- we can we have to rule out the possibility that Du Fu did not afford to eat his fill of vegetables, and also we have to rule out the possibility that uh, in Luoyang it was easier to get hold of meat than vegetables. Um, if we look at the detailed vocabulary here, this Shan. Um, it is. Um, well, it originally means the, the the smell of mutton, actually, and this xing is usually used for the smell of fish. But it, it's one concept that they refer to. Uh, they refer to together here. Ye ren dui shan xin shu shi chang bu bao. So he's uh, he's wearied after two years in the capital with. The scheming and the intrigues, the people, and also with the, with the food and the and the, the, the yes, this conspicuous consumption of 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 expensive foods. Qi wu jing jing fan. Well, I really mangled that line, didn't I? Qi wu jing jing fan, shi wo yan se hao. Of course, I had green essence food. Now this is weird. Of course, jing jing fan. What's that? Of course, there was not no Qing Jing Fan. This has been much commented on. The best explanation is that this refers to a certain plant, and the juice of its leaves could be used to soak rice. Uh, and the rice then took on a green color, and this was supposed to prolong one's life in the Taoist tradition. And thus, Shi Wei Yan Se Hao, to make my complexion my the look of my face, the face, uh, the the color of my face. Actually, that's what yan se means. Yan se is, of course, the modern Chinese word for th- color as such. But in when it's used in classical Chinese, yan se means the the color of one's complexion or simply one's complexion. Qi wu jing jing fan shi wei yan se hao. So he didn't really eat enough vegetables, according to himself, but he had at least the nourishment of Taoist practices. Ku fa da yao zi, shan lin ji ru sao. Yeah, more Taoist vocabulary here. We talk, he talks about something called the da yao. Ku fa. He lacked the zi. Ingredients is the translation here. Let's, yeah, let's, let's get back to that later. Ku fa. Badly lacked. I badly lack, lack the ingredients to the great elixir. So the great elixir is the most precious medicine, one might say. This is all. This is this refers to the 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 greatest fruit of Taoist alchemy, the Jin Dan, which causes you to to. Become all ethereal substance and turn into one of the immortals, and he lacks the zi for that. He says ingredients here, 
Yes, I, I think that is a valid translation, but I think also it might it might mean which it would be mean usually z is is the money that you spend on something actually. So he seems to say that he is he doesn't have the money to buy the ingredients for the great elixir. And actually, uh, the comments to my edition they make it clear that there was actually um, um, it's it's been mentioned in Taoist literature that the expen that the ingredients for this eight elixir are supposed to be very expensive. So it might not that he j be that he just lacks the ingredients for it. He also might lack the actual money to to get it. In any case. The next line is Shan Lin Ji Ru Sa. The, the, the syntax here is quite loose. Uh, I think you should read these two lines together. So, Qi Wu Qing Jing Fan Shi Wei Yan Sa Ha. He had this Qing Jing Fan, and he, but he didn't have the Da, the da Yao Zi, Ku Fa Da Yao Zi, Shan Lin Ji Ru Sa. Okay? So, this. It's almost as if you lack this shi wo zai zhe li, these two shi wo. They, I don't have the money for the, or the ingredients for the great elixir so that I could disappear, or with, my traces could disappear in the mountain forest. Because this shan lin ji ru sao, sao ji zai shan lin zhong, perhaps we would say in, in modern Chinese. This this refer this this is the end point of Taoist practice that you 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 just disappear somewhere in the in the wilderness and no one knows what happened to you. So I don't think this, I think the translation is a little bit off here when it says that in mountain forests all my traces have been swept away. That is what he wants, but what he can't do. So, so a lot of the time, actually. Um, we are used to reading these poems line by line and sort of take it for granted that each line is uh, its own unit of meaning and since and, and th there is no real concept in the western understanding i think of chinese poetry of such a thing as enjambment where one line continues into the other but that is frequently the case that two lines are one sentence, you might say, or one sense unit. And I think this is the case here. Comma, or question mark, and then Yeah. So he had uh, a little bit of it. He had uh, the, the sort of, he has taken the first preliminary steps if we prefer to read these two lines as a metaphor, it's taken the first preliminary steps on the path of da or Taoist practice, but he hasn't reached the the inner court of a true adept. Perhaps something like that. Unlike, of course, his great hero, who the poem is addressed to. So let's go to the next line. Li Ho, here we have Lord Li. Ho, as we know, is an ancient title, of a no, no, noble title, and title of the nobility. Of course, these are completely ab, uh, obsolete in Dufu's time. The, the old feudal system didn't exist, so Ho here has degraded into sort of mere, mere honorific. And uh, as I said, I don't think this honorific is even used that, sh that much. And, uh, but he clearly means it is not ironic or anything here. It's Li Ho, Lord Li. Is, Someone he admires immensely. Li Ho Jing Wei Yan Tuo Shen Shi You Tao, a luminary of the golden chambers. Yeah, Yan is a a worthy person. So Jing Wei Yan, a luminary of the golden chambers. This uh, Jing Gui, uh, golden chambers. Yes, that is a literal translation. Um, this is supposed to be. Uh, or historically, it was another name for uh, the Jinma Men, the Golden Horse Gate in the Han Dynasty capital. And that's where the emperors of the Han assembled men of genius and learning. So this refers to the temporary position that Li Bai had in the Tang Hanlin Academy. 
and he left this uh, Hanlin Academy, uh, or we could say he was relieved of this position after personal conflicts, and that's what the this uh, second line refers to. Torshen shi you tao, so Torshen he he got away with his life almost. It sounds like, but I think we should read it just as if he he pulled himself out of it. Torshen, and then shi you tao. Arcane research. I like this translation. Yes, that's more or less what it is. This is secret, undisclosed uh, pursuits. Of course, the Taoist, the whole Taoist uh, system of personal fulfillment and and uh, religious practice. So, shi as a verb, tuoshen shi you tao. Mm, so, I too will undertake travels in Liang and Song. Well, two, it says here, Yi, also, Yo. There is also, almost, if you would be really literal about it, Yi, Yo, Liang, Song, Yo. The travels in the, in the Liang and Song region. So, Liang and Song is the eastern part of modern Henan province, to the east of the uh, Loya, of, of, of the capital. Uh, actually, he doesn't say it, it, that this line is about himself, but yeah, we can probably assume that it is. Uh, it sounds like Levi has already left the capital, and that he wants to do it as well. And we see actually in later poems that they do meet up more further east and they travel. So, yi you liang song you fang qi shi yao cao. And only then, fang, this works as cai, more or less in the in modern Chinese. Qi, expecting to gather the yao cao. This yao cao is not an actual plant. This is rather a mythological substance, which is said to be the remains of a daughter of the ancient god, Di. And actually, this whole last line is taken almost directly from a letter by Dongfang Shuo, the Han Dynasty poet and writer. He says there in one place, Xiang Qi Shi Yao Cao. Having a, 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 a meeting or meeting up in order to gather the, this Yao plant. So we have Li Ho, you have left already your arcane pursuits and when you or I he's loose about this we can't say exactly but when 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 we travel to the Liang and Song region we can expect to gather these Yao Cao together yes that is probably the best understanding of this that is probably the best understanding of it yes so here we have it the first poem that we have preserved from Du Fu to Li by certainly a, a production of immense historical interest and as I said not without literary value as well as well all right thank you for listening